G'day YouTube, it's Chris back again with Low Carb Life and today we are making keto tacos. Make sure that you stick around to the end because we've got the whole keto taco recipe themselves. We've got the crispy fried chicken number two recipe in there and we've got our tortillas as well. Guys, it's gonna be fantastic. You don't wanna miss any of these because they're all great on their own as well. Now, not everything went to plan in this session, but it was fun nonetheless. So join us for a laugh and sit back and relax. All right, guys, now we're gonna get our almond flour. We're gonna put about two thirds of a cup in. Honestly, don't bother about measuring it. Just get around the best that you can. I reckon that's about two thirds of a cup, if not a whole cup. But look, you know, everyone says less is more. I think more is more and go for that. It's good. Ooh. That nearly died. Oh no. Uh -oh. My microplane's Wait, it is. I found it. My microplane is actually downstairs again, so I'm gonna get stuck into this. We need about two thirds of a cup of this, so we're gonna get that into the bowl so we can make our batter. Man, the smell of this parmesan being grated, it just reminds me of like when you're at work and the whole room begins to start smelling like corn chips, rotten socks, and parmesan cheese and like you know you're the only one with your shoes off because you look around and then you know you think like what am I gonna do? Do you put them back on or do you just leave them off and hope no one checks your feet? It's really awkward because there's only two seats in my room where I see patients so I think I should just put them back on. So guys, the reason that I am using palms and cheese grated my fine self um, is because the microplane does a way better job. If you buy the big um, pre-grated palms and you're going to find that it's pretty yes. Honestly, it's the stuff is much thicker than this. Whereas honestly, if I toss this into the old almond dust, you're going to find that it, it blends in really well. It turns into dust itself. So you don't want things that aren't going to turn into dust. And if you're a Twilight fan, you'll really love this because, you know, all of this is turning into dust. We've got our almond flour into dust, we've got our cheese into dust, and I'm not even going to use that footage because that is so... Right. Do help a brother out. Hope you're not my brother. Alright. <laughs> well guys, that's about it, pretty much. I'm just going to go and give this a hell of a good toss together. Yeah, look, tossing a salad, it's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. And this isn't salad. I've never had chicken tonight, so... Oh, it's bloody good. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. Here we go, I found one. I thought I found one. Get one for the chef. <laughs> <laughs> garlic, yes, garlic. So next we're gonna spice it and I'm gonna put in a bit of chili flakes. Just a wee dash of that. Now, don't go too wild with it. <laughs> but don't go less wild than you need. You need to make sure there's plenty in there. Once you've got the lid back onto your stupid thing that doesn't actually get back on, you've got that sorted. Now we need some black pepper. I actually call this move the peppercorn bing bong. Beautiful. And then of course we're gonna go for some hell amounts of garlic. It's always good garlic. You can't really overdo it. If you've ever met that someone that's said they've overdone garlic, don't believe them, they're full of <laughs> Very good stirring going on here. Now guys, remember, you can see that this amount is totally for just two chicken thighs. Um, I've really possibly underdone it here. Um, yeah, there is quite a lack of crumbing, but I think, you know, we might be all right in the end. And this is why, guys, you have a wife, because she reminds you that you should put salt in when you should, because I forgot about it. But to be honest, salt is the salt of the earth and you need to have salt. Now this light salt that we've been using, hello, she's bloody into it as well, <laughs> cheeky bugger. <laughs> but guys, yeah, you do need the salt. If you don't have the salt, um, well, it's, it's saltless and that tastes pretty average to be honest. So I'm actually just tossing this for ridiculous amounts of time just so I can talk more. And you guys love me talking, obviously this is why you're watching it anyway. I'm just tossing the salad without need. All right. Chicks. 
Tick's got a line. The only thing left to do is to finish it off with some Parmesan Bay. So let's grab a bit of that. Oh, jeez, and that looks as tidy as a string bikini on a full-figured woman. Now, guys, recording is hard work, so obviously, Chook has got some snacks for myself and herself, and we're living the dream. Chook, having a sip of wine there. All right, guys, this, these don't just happen themselves. These videos don't just fall onto YouTube all on their own. All right, you'll enjoy it more when you know what goes into it. G'day, and how's your father? Now guys, we're just filling up the olive oil, the light, light version if you can get it. Um, light, because honestly, with this extra version olive oil type stuff, you just, you don't know where the olive oils have been, so you don't want to mess around with that too much, because who knows. And that's looking as oily as Popeye's girlfriend. So that's the oil, and we're going to put it on a medium heat, alright? So let's hope I get this right this time, because I've stuffed up many times. You know, I use this every day, and I still stuff it up every time. I can't believe it either. They even have little pictures. They even have little pictures on here telling you which one it is, and I still screw it up. You wouldn't be surprised, though, knowing but the rest of my antics, so let's have a look. This is the top left corner. Confirmed. We need two-factor authentication on this one. Turn that on high, and then wind it back down to medium. We should be right for that, guys. I think that's going to get us up to a shitload of degrees um, can't give you any, any specifics currently, but look, it's going to be hot enough to fry something, so let's just go with it. <laughs> You've got that? food in your corner of your mouth. Alright guys, we're going to get our batter... No, oh, we're not. We're getting our tortillas. Alright YouTube, now we are getting our tortillas ready for the cooking. So, let's get all our stuff in here and go from there. Okay, you know, mate, give us a look. Give us a look. <laughs> Cheeky. He loves Australia Day, actually. He comes down here just to stare at that flag occasionally. <laughs> he loves it. But we've got a happy Chook and a happy cat. We are... Uh, life is good. Life That's is good. good. And we got our <laughs> baking powder. That's right. Finally. <laughs> we are ready to go with our almond meal. So we're going to get 96 grams of this stuff here. But honestly, I reckon you just have a guesstimate yourself, um, to be honest. Now... Look, let's have a cheeky look at how I went here. So we're going to zero that. That was useless because I'm about to put a bowl on top as well. Now I'm going to zero it again just to see how I went. We're at zero. Look, he's not bad. Look, I'll, t I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not bad. I'm going to give it a piff more. Just a piff more. Guys, honestly, with this sort of stuff, I know it is baking. And, oh, jeez. And, you know, some people are real funny about the baking, but to be honest, I'm not. So 97 grams, we're aiming for 96. I'm not, I'm not going to get my bloody panties in a bunch about that one. So let's just keep going from there. Next one we're going to go for is our coconut flour. So we've got our almond flour over here. Of course, we're going to zero that, and we are going to get our coconut flour in there and we're aiming for around about 25 grams of the coconut flour and this stuff guys is extremely absorbent so you know you you really don't want to muck around with this one now if you're sitting at home with a delicious bevy i would recommend playing a drinking game have a sip every time i say guys honestly or piff or bad boys and we're gonna have a few drunk people by the end 25 and high five for that. All right, we got there in the end and don't stress about it. So you can put this back. Guys, I think this one is about seven years old. It's been lurking in the pantry the whole time. Honestly, I don't think it goes too bad. It doesn't It doesn't go off or anything, so don't worry about it. It's literally coconut that's been scrounged up and squeezed of oil, so I think we're pretty <laughs> right. Thanks, Chip. Thanks for that sneeze. I did Good job. Have a finger. All right. Anyway, now we've got our husk dust and it looks pretty good. You know, if I was to be getting around some coconut flour, I'd have that. Looks good. I think we're going to mix this old almond flour into it as well. Now, guys, remembering the coconut flour is extremely absorbent, so we do want to get some other moisture around it. And... Nothing. <laughs> nothing 
Donald tomorrow. <laughs> Alright guys, so the next thing you're going to need is two teaspoons of xanthan gum. I'm a naughty boy and I've got a tablespoon here. But, you know, I reckon one tablespoon piled up should be about the amount of um, two teaspoons of xanthan gum. Oh, I meant to keep half that. I really did. Shit. <laughs> well, she's going to be nice and sticky, that's for sure. Hmm. <laughs> we'll give that a mix around after you realise you've totally destroyed your dish and keep going until it's actually incorporated and then we're going to actually start adding some of your baking powder. Now who cares if it's yours or mine but at the same time let's get this open. <laughs> what is that? And Chuck, have you put that in there or is that my fault? Oh my god it's a packet. Alright so if you buy some weird bloody baking powder you're gonna get some weird packet in it and you better work around that now I think they said here a teaspoon of baking powder I'm gonna be way more careful with this one that's about a tea teaspoon right guys oh no no less less oh god no that's you're not you're gonna go way less and guys they said that you're gonna need a teaspoon of this so I've just gone and hoofed ahead with my tablespoon anyway and oh, here no. it is Chook says no I have to go, I have to re, I have to reevaluate. Hang on, Chook, is that all right? No, less. More or less? Yeah, 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 less yeah, than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you go. And that's a teaspoon. Borderline. Apparently here, all right. Guys, I'm not one for measurements. I really just love piffing stuff in. Um, if, it, if, if it tastes good at the end, it's good. Sometimes I get to the end and it doesn't taste good and they're the ones we just call up bloody, I hate to say it, dominoes occasionally, but you just don't want to get them. I'm worried. I'm gonna give this a hell of a good mix. Make sure you get all that bloody tiny little teaspoon mixed in around there. And I think once we've got it pretty even, we're gonna start adding, you can spin your bowl for extra, extra special effects, um, but actually it does kind of help mix it as well. But once you've got that stirred really nicely, we're gonna get our wet ingredients and we're going to put them in as well. <laughs> and I've been seeing way more lentil chips flying around the kitchen lately and today I had one come right at me. I had no arguments with what was happening except that it was made of lentils when I would rather it be made of steak but what can you do? <laughs> Alright, next. Nan, confirming dinner. Good, good job Nan. Mm -hmm. Thanks Nan, I will be at dinner on Tuesday at 6.30. Thank you for your text. <laughs> Alright, I'll be there. Now it is time to get our apple cider vinegar um, into the mix. So we're going to pour in two tablespoons. As you can see, I'm very careful about how I measure these things. So let's get that in there. I reckon that's about it. So once we've got that in, we are going to get our eggs in there as well. Now guys, when you get your eggs, make sure they are covered in turds. Um, it just means it's more original and it tastes way better. If it's not covered in turds, it means you've bought them and it's not as good. I should just do this one-handed to try and prove a point, but I, re I might regret it. I regretted that. That was bad. Let's try it again. I'm confident that I will be able to do it this time. Salt bay. Call me egg bay. It's okay. Now guys, careful who you crack eggs in front of because if you're not careful, you might end up fertilizing them and that's honestly another concern that you have. Now today we're gonna mix our eggs with our vinegar and to be honest, don't worry if it gets out of the pan. Um, if, you're, if you're doing this in a pan, you're doing it wrong. Get a bowl, as I have. And we're trying to mix this. Guys, I just realized that you totally should mix your eggs first and then put your bloody vinegar in after. I totally screwed this up. But nothing gets screwed up on this channel. Now, once you've finished mixing, just keep playing with it for a while because it's actually quite fun to mix the eggs like this. Um, they sound nice and therapeutic and I've been loving the sound. Occasionally I play it when I'm trying to go to sleep. It's really nice. Once they are actually mixed though, you can stop and you can start mixing in your dry ingredients, which is what we're going to do. So get your dry ingredients 
and start frolicking them into the bowl. Now, I only get one chance of this, so this better look good. Ooh, 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 you don't want lumps. No one likes lumps. Oh, the coconut flour's taken hold. Hang on, guys, quick, shit, oh god. Oh god, get it all in there, shit. I've got some mixing to do. Bloody hell, all right. Now, you can see it's taken together itself qu quite well. Um, and, you know, once, once you've got all your mixture in the bowl here, you can just, um, you know, knead what you've got left because that's going to be the basis of everything. So really give it a good knead. Because, <laughs> geez, something's going wrong here. Keep kneading it until you're at the absolute maximum stringiness. Guys, you're looking for more stringiness than that. That just broke apart. You are looking for serious stringiness. And it's just not gonna happen for me. I need to keep massaging this. Now guys, seriously, give this a good rinse because honestly, it's, it's pretty caked up. We need to get rid of that. Um, I need my mixer back because this needs a very good knead and honestly, it's it's still not quite where I want it to be I really do want that much more sticky um, But my whisk my whisk needs a rinse I've just been reprimanded by the wife and she has told me that I wasted too much stuff Well, let's get it back in the bowl once you've got it in there, I would recommend um, probably not getting your digits into it because it is quite sticky, but I'm going to do that anyway. You guys can use a mixer. With the xanthan gum, it's, um, it is quite sticky, but you know there's no escape in it, so don't bother. Just get into it as best you can. Nice mixy mixy maroo there. Try and get it into a circle if you can, so it looks really cool and then you can show your mates, but if you can't, come on, whoops, <laughs> shit, but if you can't, look at that, it's uh, it's kind of lumpy, it's kind of good, maybe one good idea would be to coat your hands in oil, so once you've got the rest of your dough back into the bowl, you should go and tip your local baker, because they really need it. I can assure you guys, it was extremely hard to get this recipe um, from the baker because obviously bakers do trade bread recipes um, and it is actually on a need to know basis. Our local guy actually had recently quit so that's why he had more time to share the recipe with me. But you know, he didn't actually need any more dough after he made a killing down at the bakery there. Now if that doesn't look like good dough, I don't know what does because I can't make dough, clearly. But anyway, we're gonna get on with it and we're gonna start frying up these tortillas in a nice pan. And guys, I'm gonna pick a non-stick pan, to be honest, because I don't want them getting overly greasy. So the next thing we're going to do is gonna roll out our tortillas and give this a bit of a sprinkle with your old almond flour because you don't want it um, sticking. Roll it up into a circle and we're gonna pop him down on the middle of our almond cracker dust. Spread that out like you look like you know what you're doing. And so my theory has arrived that baking paper is really good to help things not to stick. Now grab the wine bottle that you've recently polished off and we're gonna start rolling out with this thing because I don't actually have a roller. So you do a little bit like this way and roll it back that way. Then you go a bit this way, and you roll it back a bit that way. Now guys, keep going, rolling it back this way, and then rolling it back that way. 10 bucks for who can guess what's happening next. Roll it that way, then roll it this way. Roll it this way, and then roll it that way. We're gonna have to peel it off. This is gonna be a challenge. Oh no. Once you've got it easy as that comes off, I'm gonna definitely sprinkle it with a touch of almond flour on top. Just give that a little bit of a rub around, you know. Once you've got that, peel it off. Now it should just peel off really easily, um, as you'll see here, very easily peeling off. Super easy. I'm glad it wasn't actually stuck to the keyboard or anything. And you just keep easily peeling that off, really easily, and start getting a bit frustrated with it and sliding it. 
So once you get, once you get your nose. It's terrible. Once you've finished peeling it off so easily, you just grab your big um, tortilla and then we're gonna spread it back out again because that shouldn't have happened. But anyway, once I start rolling this back out again, I think we should end up with a reasonable shaped thing. So guys, we've had to revise this one. Um, it's, it, you know, she definitely didn't get stuck, but honestly, it uh, had a bit more ferocity than I thought. She definitely uh, gripped on a bit more, but you know, what can we do? So we're, gonna, we're just gonna peel that off nice and easily, and we're gonna give it a good squish back out. Yep, that's looking pretty good and out squished there now. And we're gonna give it a hell of a nice toast. Look at that. Guys, another not funny story that I had to share with you. Um, one of my mates on the weekend, I was, I was cooking up some pizzas for everyone, and he was like, um, you know, do you want another beer? Is my pizza gonna be long? And I was like, I just looked at him, I was like, no mate, it's gonna be round. And then he just said to me, he's like, Jesus crust, mate, you've gotta stop with the puns, they're getting pretty frustrating. That looks pretty good. <laughs> that looks pretty good. <laughs> We've got our pan red hot and ready. She's actually way too hot. So I'm going to turn that back down a bit. I'm going to put a bit of oil on. Well, she should be deep fried by the time I'm finished with it. Obviously you don't generally want that happening. Um, you just want to give it a nice toast. But look, things have gone awry tonight. Off she goes. Alright, look at that. That's actually quite nice. It's getting a good bit of sizzle there and we're looking at a happy little tortilla. To be honest, I think she's good. Guys, I am actually releasing an album soon about tortillas, but I am going to spare you the suffrage of that because it's actually more like a wrap than anything. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know we can get that one. So while we're finally chopping our coriander here, guys, I'll tell you a funny tale about um, last year when we were traveling over to Europe. We stopped in Seoul in Korea. And I actually found out that their national herb is called coriander. Anyway, by the time we got to this part of the dinner, we were about three hours deep of cooking and getting pretty hungry. So, you know, with the tomatoes here, we're just less than finely chopping them. And for those of you playing at home, I've got some trivia here. So what type of tomato smells best? And guys, of course, it is aroma. And you can be. Oh, oh, oh no. god! Oh no! Now's about the time where I wished I could say avocadabra and be done with it because I am hungry at this point. So I find the best way to get your avocado ready and out of its skin is to peel it. Some people like to spoon it, but I don't feel that way about avocado, and I don't think you should either. And this is a really good little part of the recipe here for any avocados that you've got because they do love this stuff. You know, I think they really like the garlic, to be honest. Alright guys, back to the chicken. And she's as done as the burger that I left in the barbecue until the smoke alarm woke me up. But overall, actually, it doesn't look overly burnt. Look at that. No, I'm happy with that. Oh, we'll keep that one. Perfect. It looks like one for the chef's assistant has snuck in there, but has approval. Now guys, make sure you give you lettuce a hell of a good chop. And sometimes deepen that. Peel off any old grandmas that you've got there, because no one wants them inside the salad. And, I tricked you, we're not actually making salad, we're making tacos. Guys, so... Who would want that in the taco? No one. Guys, nick off the bottom half of that lettuce and we're gonna give that to the chooks. They're gonna absolutely love it and I don't, so that's why they're getting it. Chop your lettuce as carefully as a gorilla with a sledgehammer. Once we've got your lettuce neatly on the plate here, we're gonna start getting our accoutrements ready. Now we're gonna chop our onion and you're probably going to end up crying like a kid on their 11th birthday who's just learnt that he hasn't received his Hogwarts letter. So me personally, I like to try and stay pretty calm when I'm cutting onions. 
but I usually end up as calm as your stomach with food poisoning or your sphincter after a bottle of laxatives. It's pretty hard, but I have found a way around it, and that's to have a piece of chewing gum before you cut them. All right, I've got a ball in a china shop here. And that was a bit like bringing a pun to a knife fight. That wouldn't be very sharp. But this one was, and it's stuck into the floor. Seeing as we're gonna be putting it on top of the tacos, I'm going to cut it in half first to get the best bits out of it. So guys, I am going to take a few cheeky slivers. Now you want this nice and thin because no one likes thick onions. And let, let's just get a bit of this. Now, honestly, what we're gonna do with it, probably one more worth. We're gonna get that into a nice bowl. Put it into your bowl here. Look at this happy little onion family. After we've got them sorted, we're going to grab our onion. And then we're gonna grab our lemon. And we're gonna grab that. <laughs> I'm gonna cut that down the guts. And you know, just make sure you get um, seedless lemons as I've got here because they are the greatest kind of lemons. You don't have to actually strain them once you've got seedless lemons. But now guys, we're gonna not strain our lemon and we're gonna get that into the old bowl there. Making sure you don't bother straining it because they are seedless after all, so you don't have to worry about that. And once you've got them sorted, we're just gonna <laughs> move on to our next section. All we're gonna do now is put a tiny piff of salt on there and a little bit of garlic to follow it up. It's gonna turn it into actually quite a little nice relish. You've seen my chili sauce recipe, look at that. That's absolutely stunning, you can't go wrong with it. I'm gonna put a bit of that in there, just to help mix it up. Dead set, it is delicious. Make sure you get all of your fingers in there, don't let one out, or I'm gonna actually have to get my pinkies in there as well to help this. Make sure you spill as much onion as possible. Um, that's gonna really help things to I think it really actually helps the flavor once you spill a few onions. Yum, that looks really good. Well guys, this chicken has got me more excited than caps lock letters and needless exclamation marks. Well that's it, she's looking a lot better than tofu. Wow, that is insanely crunchy. Guys, I am super impressed by this. This chicken is the crispiest chicken I've ever had. This is the most crispy chicken I've ever actually had that I've had on keto, which has been for the last 20 years. I was born keto, so. All right, guys, I'm finally eating some of our crispy ass chicken. It is some of the finest stuff I've ever had. To be honest, I'm the gladdest person to be eating this. Look at it, it's crispy, it is just absolutely insane. The crunchiest stuff I've had, I've eaten already three pieces and it's just blowing my mind. I cannot excite you enough for this. I'm still reeling from that fried chicken, but look, let's get some on our tortilla. And look, I'm not gonna be riding home to mum about this one. The presentation was appalling, but look, it tasted good in the end. And we'll save this for Ron, which is going to be me. Grab your absolutely pieced together delicious crispy chicken taco. And we're going to hook into that and give it a good go. So it doesn't need sauce. This thing is so good it doesn't actually need sauce. That was amazing. Latest and greatest recipe. Get around it. If you don't enjoy it, honestly, I don't care. Enjoy it. Make sure you have a taste of it and get around it because after you taste it, you will love it. And then you will like and subscribe to the channel, guys. It really helps us a lot. So we really need you to get on there, like and subscribe, both things. And we'll talk to you in a bit.